wanted to make another video. Um, I know that we have a frequently asked question of how do you distinguish quartz from glass? And the answer is, it can be really hard. <laughs> um, if it's done well, like in terms of like fakes or, um, you know, just, I don't know. I feel like you don't really need to use this skill very often if you're like outside rock hounding or like looking for stuff. But uh, some people, some, not people, I suppose, like some businesses, sellers, um, they're not, uh, not everyone's got the honesty and integrity that um, we do at Wandering Stones. And um, at Wandering Stones, we're always really dedicated to authenticity and integrity and ethically sourced materials. And um, so I always been 100% confident that all of the quartz that we get is glass. Um, generally, we'll do like some small tests if we get things in and they look a little bit weird to us. Um, so there are some things you can do to distinguish, um, a real quartz crystal from a fake glass crystal or just, you know, a clump of quartz from a clump of glass as well. Um, so the first thing I think that's among the more obvious things visually, if it's just, you know, a crystal is, um, quartz crystals are going to have this really gorgeous natural texture to them that is really difficult and nigh impossible to replicate with glass so you can see this one has got it really well um you can tell that this is an authentic quartz point quartz crystal because it's got these like striations and texture um this one's also a really good example um another one sometimes the the points of quartz crystals can be cut if they weren't you know forming that nice point um but this is a really good example of a natural quartz face you can see that subtle texture in there as it catches the light and that really can't be captured very well in a glass um fraudulent piece of quartz um now in terms of the material um glass is softer than quartz glass sits at a 5.5 quartz sits at a 7 quartz cannot scratch itself um so I'll demonstrate oh well oh yeah yeah there's no wound there from the quartz um I can try as I might but I will not harm the quartz with another quartz crystal. Glass, on the other hand, um, you can use, you know, if you have a point that like you know is quartz, um, you can do a scratch test on a crystal and you can see if it leaves a scratch or um, if the quartz is able, if the quartz point that you know is quartz is able to scratch the other material that you're wondering about, um, then it's most likely... Um, that's a, it's a good indicator as well. Um, another way to test it is, um, this is hard to communicate, I suppose, but, um, I don't know. This isn't my favorite way, but it is a way to do it is, um, the temperature of, um, quartz is, it's quite cool to the touch generally when it sits at room temperature. Obviously if it sits in the sun, it's a different story, but, um, glass will kind of acclimate to the temperature that it's sitting in, um, so it will usually, quartz will be cooler to the touch than glass will. When I have, like, both my fingers resting on it, there's, like, a clear temperature difference under this finger than there is under this one. So that's a really interesting way to look as well. Um, we went through the scratch tests, the hardness, um, the textural aspects of quartz that is really difficult to see in glass um or by difficult I mean it's really like not very possible or uncommon to see those in glass um you can do a burn test this also isn't my favorite um the glass can get kind of warped by burning it the quartz will be unaffected by the burn um, um I think a really fun way to determine if something is glass or quartz, is quartz has a higher refractive indice than glass does. So when I hold up my finger behind this quartz, you can see that there's a level of 
distortion that's happening. Like it's, it's kind of, my fingers are kind of fuzzy there. Um, the glass does not have this quality to it. Um, so that's something that you can look for with authentic quartz as well is, are your fingers, are your eyeballs, are they distorted on the other side of the quartz? Or is it just clear and see-through like the glass is? Um, it's another one of my favorite ways. Um, air bubbles is a good way to see if something is quartz or glass. As you can see, like, this is a very solid material. Um, there are inclusions of like refractions, which we talked about the refractive indices. Um, there can be like micro cracks and things in macro cracks in the quartz crystals that we're not going to see in glass when it gets smelted. Um, sometimes air bubbles can be trapped inside of the glass. It, air bubbles can be naturally occurring in quartz, but generally when they're um, impurities in a glass smelted material, the air bubbles are going to be really small and spherical. Um, the reason that that's not my favorite way is because it kind of, that's really dependent on like the glass having those impurities and they don't always do. So if they're there, it's helpful, but um, in general, I think the distortion and the hardness and um, are the two things that you can always pretty much look for with the materials. Um, it's really challenging sometimes to tell the difference between glass and quartz, even when you have all of these tools in your toolbox. So um, if you get if you get fooled, the best of us do. Um, but just remember that quartz is going to be very textured. It's going to be very distortive. It's going to be a little cooler to the touch. Um, and it's going to be harder. And glass will be softer. It'll be more clear. Um, the refractive indice is lower. Um, it'll be smoother. It'll be, it won't have any like impurities or um, inclusions in it. Uh, a lot of the time with quartz, we can see things like, I'm gonna wonder if there was a piece of quartz that had some really beautiful inclusions that I saw earlier. Let's see if I can find it <laughs> quickly. Um, Hmm. I don't know that I... Oh! Found it. Quartz can often have inclusions as well. So quartz is often not by its lonesome. Um, there's a lot of times where it'll have little pals that are hanging out in it too. Um, Rutile is a really good example that's going to be gold and fibrous. I don't think I have an example of that on me right now. But... Um, those are some titanium dioxide inclusions that are like hair-like gold strands that go through it. Um, tourmaline can be found in quartz. There's a ton of impurities and things and flecks of material that can be found in quartz that you wouldn't really be able to replicate in a glass way. Um, so yeah, those are a couple of ways that you can tell the difference between quartz and glass, even though it can be really difficult. There are a lot of tools that you can use to observe the differences between the two. All right, thanks so much. If you guys have any other questions on how to distinguish two minerals from each other or two materials from each other, um, please let me know. I'd love to do another video on it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.